The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. Come on, come on, Betsy, what is your mother doing up there? She's getting dressed, and she looks just beautiful. Well, if she doesn't step on it, there'll be no point in going to the party, I'm telling you. It'll be over before we get there. You look nice, too, Daddy. Oh, oh thank you. Doesn't he, Aunt Effie? Oh, I should say you look just handsome. Yeah, well, thanks very much. <laughs> Frankly, I wish I weren't going out. I'd just as soon stay home and get to bed early. Oh, my, no, it's New Year's Eve. I wish I were going to a party. So do I. Well, we'll have fun together, Betsy. I made us some hot chocolate, and we'll... Oh, my goodness! I left the hot chocolate on the stove. Can I stay up until midnight, Daddy? No, oh, no, darling. You're too little yet. You go to bed like a good girl. Can I wear my evening wrap, or is it too cold? No, no, you'll be all right. We'll be in the car. Look, hurry up, will you? Come on. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm oh, coming. Oh, Mommy, you look just beautiful. <sighs> Thank you, Betsy. Uh, is this dress too tight? <laughs> well... Boy, you look like Marilyn Monroe. Well, I could hardly get the zipper up. I must have gained weight. It will certainly be one of my New Year's resolutions, go on a diet. Well, let's go. Where's Aunt Effie? She's in the kitchen. <laughs> Honestly, I feel kind of guilty leaving her alone on New Year's Eve. I know. Maybe we shouldn't go. Look, she insisted that we accept the invitation. I now. know, but she's made all these little remarks about how she wishes she were going out on a party. And frankly, I think Myra should have asked her. She knew Aunt Effie was here. Think I should call Myra now and say something? Oh, no. Look, we're all ready to go by the time Aunt Effie got dressed anyhow. I don't see how you can do that if, My if Myra didn't ask her to begin with. No, and, uh... no, I suppose not. Uh... Well, good night, Betsy. Have a good time. Oh, we will, darling. Give Mommy a kiss. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look out there, Betsy. Don't bust <gasps> Mommy's hair now. She's been an hour. Mommy on. doesn't mind, does she? No, as long as I'm getting such a nice hug and kiss, huh? Mm. Oh, gracious. <laughs> I love you. Oh, I love you too, honey. Now, oh, Aunt Effie, there you are. Now, look, Betsy can stay up a bit longer tonight, but what's the matter? One of the dogs seems to be sick. Our dog, no, Brownie? No, one of Eleanor's, the little one, Tippy. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Oh, well, we better look at him, dear, before we go. Come on. Uh... <laughs> If you have a cold, bronchitis, or the chicken pox, you naturally get to work at once to do something about curing the disease. If the symptoms of some physical illness appear, you try to prevent the illness from getting worse. But far too many of us look upon one of the most serious and most prevalent of illnesses, mental or emotional disturbances, as some sort of a stigma. We're afraid to admit when mental illness occurs in our family and often wait until too late to do something about it. But the rigors of modern living can bring on tensions in any of us. And these tensions can help develop into very serious mental disorders if something isn't done to alleviate them. A great deal of wonderful work is being accomplished in the prevention, treatment, and cure of mental illness. If we treat it just as another form of disease, call in the right people to deal with it, support our local mental health organizations, and accept those who've been cured of mental disorders as we would anyone cured of a physical illness, We'll all be helping to combat and reduce a serious threat to the security and well-being of our nation. Tippy? Tippy? Tippy, what's, what's the matter, little fellow, huh? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with that dog. Well, he is certainly not acting normal. You know what a lively little thing he is generally, mm -hmm. and just to lie there like this so listlessly. Well, I came out the kitchen here. You know, I remembered a hot chocolate on the stove, uh -huh. and I suddenly looked down, and there was Tippy underneath the table. I called to him, and you know how he always jumps up. Uh -huh. Well, he just kept lying there. Yes. Tippy, Tippy, want a cookie? Tippy, want a cookie? Goodness, he generally just leaps up when Betsy says that. No, maybe he's had too many cookies. I shouldn't think they'd be good for him anyway. Oh, no, the dog cookies, dog biscuits. Uh huh? You want a biscuit? Huh, Tippy? Do you? Oh, honey, there is something wrong with him. Shall I warm up some milk? Well, no, no, I'll do it, Aunt Effie. Oh, no, no, dear, you're all dressed up. You don't want to spill on that lovely dress. Uh, honestly, what do you suppose is the matter with him? Maybe he's got a virus. Look, it's 8 o'clock at night. I think he's just sleepy. Get a dog biscuit out of the box, Betsy, and offer it to him. Mm -hmm. You know, we would do with the Pemberton's at 8 o'clock. 
Do you want to just walk off and leave a sick dog? Well, for Pete's sake, he probably just ate something that doesn't agree with him. Lots of times, Brownie acts that way. Next day, he's fine. Here, Tippy. Here, want a dog biscuit? Tippy? Hmm? Well, no, he doesn't. He doesn't want it. Look at that. Now, that is not like him at all. Boy, last week, we sat up half the night playing nursemaid to Eleanor's goldfish. And... Tropical fish. Well, all right. Tropical goldfish. Fish, anyway. Whatever they are. Well, two of them died, and ones we replaced them with aren't exactly the same, and Eleanor's going to be upset about that. I certainly don't want anything to happen to one of her dogs while she's away. Well, I don't either, but... Boy, you know, I still think it's a lot of nerve to dump all your pets on somebody to take care of, and the bitenness were only going to be gone a week, you know. Well, They've been gone two weeks already, having themselves a fine time in Florida while we worry about their hey, fish tippy. and their dogs and their parakeets. Hey, tippy, little tippy. Well, the oh. parakeets are all right, thank goodness. There. I think this milk is warm enough. It shouldn't be too warm. Here, Tippy, you want some milk? Oh, generally, he just loves oh. milk. Well, honey, when a dog doesn't feel well, he's got sense enough not to eat. Then you admit he doesn't feel well. Now, look, you two go on to your party, and I'll keep an eye on him. Yeah, sure, come on, Aunt Effie will uh -huh. watch him. Let's go. Well, I don't feel right going to a party, dear, and just leaving him. Oh. I just don't. Well, there isn't anything we can do for him. Well, I think we had better call a vet. Call a vet on New Year's Eve? Well, the dog doesn't know it's New Year's Eve. What? He didn't pick this time not to feel well. Besides, now that I think back, it seems to me he hasn't been quite as lively as usual the past two or three days, but I just didn't pay any attention. He didn't eat his dinner yesterday. Mm. He didn't? Well, it was gone. Brownie ate it. Well, for Brownie... Pete's sake, maybe our dog's been gobbling up Tippy's food, and Tippy's just weak from hunger. Did Brownie push him away? No, Tippy just looked at his food and walked away, and so Brownie ate it. Well, I'll call Myra and tell her that we're going to be late, and then we'll call a vet. Now, where did I put Eleanor's list of instructions? She wrote down which doctor their dogs have. Oh. You call Myra while I look up the vet. <sighs> There he is. A car just drove up. There's a doctor, Mommy. Mm. Oh, oh. Oh. Honestly, what's his name again? Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Gibbons. Gibbons. Honestly, we don't know anything about him. What do we have to know about him? He's a vet. <clears throat> Only one we could get hold of. He's nice enough to leave a party. I know, but uh, I mean, we don't know anything about him. Is he any good? I mean, he doesn't know Tippy or anything. Well, I just hope he hasn't been partying too much already so he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Look, for Pete's sake, we got a sick dog and he's a vet. After two hours, we were lucky to get anybody. What do you want to do, charter a plane and fly Tippy out to the Mayo Clinic? <laughs> well, when you have the responsibility of somebody else's dog, you feel you ought to get the best. Yeah, mm. well, we're trying... Hey, I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, oh well, Dr. Gibbons? <laughs> That's right. Well, come in, come in, come Doctor. In. Say, it was very nice of you to come over. Oh, this is my wife, uh, Mrs. Piper, and, and my aunt, Miss Sorensen. How do you do? My mm -hmm. daughter, Betsy. How do, you, how do you do, Dr. Gibbons? May come I take in. your coat? Uh, thank you. Well, young lady, you got a sick doggy, huh? It's not mine. You know, you might say he's a house guest. Oh? Oh, I see. Some friends of ours went to Florida and left their two dogs with us, and it's Tippy, the little one that's sick. He hasn't been eating, and he's just lying out there sort of listless. Uh-huh, I see. Well, let's have a look at him. He's out here in the kitchen. I'm afraid you'll have to sort of crawl under the table to get at him. We we didn't like to move him. He whimpered when we tried. Uh-huh. There he is. Uh-huh. I came out to the kitchen earlier. I'd left some hot chocolate on the stove. Betsy and I were going to celebrate New Year's Eve together and have hot chocolate. <laughs> and my nephew and his wife here were going to a party at the Pembertons, some neighbors of theirs when they lived in their old house. You see, they just moved into this new house, which we think is just beautiful. And if he, uh, <laughs> the doctor really isn't interested in all that. Above. <laughs> well, I, mean... I was just trying to tell him how I noticed Tippy was sick. Is he going to die? No, no, we'll hope not. Hope not? How long did you say his owners have been gone? Two weeks, so far. Uh-huh. Well, I suspect there's only one thing wrong with Tippy. He's homesick. What? Homesick? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What, 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 what did I tell you? I just, it, there's nothing wrong with him. He's just homesick all the time. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, I tell you, we were so worried. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dr. Gibbons, for coming over. I'm sorry. It was sort of a wild goose chase. All right, honey, come on. Get, get your evening wrap. Let's get going. Boy, we were due at a party ourselves ages ago. Uh, well, <laughs> now, now, just a moment, Mr. Piper. It's not a trivial thing for a dog to be homesick. Well, no, no, I suppose not, really, but... Uh, it, not at all. And, frankly, I don't want to dismiss this lightly without confirming my diagnosis. Where does Tippy live? 
Oh, well, well uh, the uh, the Beitners live on Juniper Street, but I don't know when they'll be back. I suggest you drive him over there. See if he perks up once he's back home. Once he knows his home is still there. Well, we have the keys to their house. We can even get in. Yeah, well, that's probably not a bad idea. We'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow? I suggest, Mr. Piper, you do it tonight. T tonight? This is New Year's Eve. We're supposed to be at a party. You, you mean you mean dri drive him over there now? Well, if the Tip doctor was nice enough to leave a party to come and see Tippy, it seems to me the least we can do, dear, is to take his advice. And yes, my goodness, if you have any love for animals. Look, I love animals as much as the next guy, but if he's just homesick for Pete's sake... Have I, you I... ever been homesick, Mr. Piper? Well, I suppose when I was a kid, I... That empty, lonesome feeling that you've been deserted? That you'll never see your home again? That nobody loves you? Oh, oh the dear. poor little thing. My poor Tippy. Oh, Mommy, the poor little dog. Say, look, look, I... Why is the dog man's best friend? Because he, too, experiences the same desolation of the human heart. Hmm. Who but a dog, Mr. Piper, will love you, though the whole world be against you? Look, yeah. I love dogs. Hmm. Let that be established. I get the... All right, all right, all right. Let's get him in the car. Come on, drive him over. You have the number where I'll be. Yes. Call me and let me know what happens. Yes. Yes, yes, well, could you call Dr. Gibbons to the phone, please? It's Mrs. Piper. He's expecting me to call. Thank you. Yes. Oh, listen to him, so happy to be in his own home, racing around upstairs there, barking. He's so happy now. He's a lot happier than I am. This is, without doubt, the nuttiest way to spend a New Year's Eve, lugging a dog over to this freezing cold house to, so he can chase around barking. We'll probably get pneumonia. Well, we'll leave as soon as I talk to Dr. Gibbons. Oh, he loves dogs, doesn't he? Yeah, he loves to collect a little extra money, charging me ten bucks to tell me Eleanor's dog is homesick. Shh, be quiet, be quiet. Hello? Dr. Gibbons, we finally got over here to the Beitners. We had misplaced their house keys. But as soon as we got here, Tippy went wild with happiness. <laughs> yes, oh, he's barking at us. Uh-huh. You do what? Tippy? Tippy? Uh -huh. Come on down, boy. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. We gotta get back now. Come on. Oh. Come on, boy. Come Turn on, on the radio. Turn on the radio. Dr. Gibbons says it's almost midnight. Uh, oh, for Pete's sake, midnight? Yes. Uh, we... Yes, well, I'll ask him, Dr. Gibbons. He wonders if we could stay overnight here. What do you think? Stay over... Stay overnight? Well, I could go back home and get our toothbrushes and night S things. Stay overnight? Why? Well, he says dogs have died of homesickness. What? And he says if Tippy is so happy now that rather than tear him away again so soon, it would be better, you know, if he spent a night in his own house. But, you know, with people with us. I... You, I... Turn the radio up, but... darling. Well, what do you say? I can think of a lot of things to say, but I'm only going to say one of them. Happy New Year, sweetheart. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year, dear. Turn up the thermostat. <laughs> yes. From city dweller to farmer, Americans know that they are part of the world and close to it. And the more they can find out about it, the better. That's why the broadcasts of Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas are so popular. Each of these internationally known newsmen has a wide background in the history, the politics, the economics on which current events are built. Whether you're interested in high-level affairs of state abroad, economic developments here at home, or the latest advances of science, you'll find them presented clearly and understandably by Murrow and Thomas. If you're not already addicted to the news as CBS Radio presents it nightly, start this week to follow the broadcasts of Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas. They're both heard Mondays through Fridays on most of these same stations. The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Margaret Hamilton, Francie Myers, and John C. Becker and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz inviting you to listen again tomorrow for The Couple Next Door. <laughs>